Good afternoon and welcome to this afternoon's Google Plus Hangout. For those who haven't caught any of our previous hangouts, my name's Luca and I look after the social media at the Carlton Football Club. It's my great pleasure to introduce a man who is among the most respected figures in the long history of AFL football. As well as captaining the Hawthorne Football Club to a grand final win in 1971, David Parkin is one of only a handful of men to coach four VFL AFL sides to premiership success. In the year 2000, he was named Carlton's team of the 20th century coach after leading to the Blues to premiership success in 1981, 1982 and 1995. And in 2002, he was inducted into the Australian Hall of Fame, Australian Football Hall of Fame. In 2010, David was inducted into Carlton's Hall of Fame, ensuring he will forever be remembered as a great of this mighty football club. Today, David will be chatting to Claire, Darren and Cathy. We'll start with you, Claire. Over to you. Hi, David. Hi, Claire. I wanted to ask, aside from healthy, fit players and a favourable draw, what are the three factors you think are crucial to securing our place deep in September 2013? And do you think we have the list to get us there? Yeah, look, I think that the, the, the basic hunger from all people, those that are actually representing the club on a weekly basis and those who are servicing the players' needs to get them out there and do that, which includes supporters. Once you get to the hungry stage when Carlton people are still talking clear about 1999 preliminary final, because that's the last time we sort of won a game of significance, but it wasn't a premiership. So I think the hunger, there's a basic hunger from everybody associated with Carlton, but the time is nigh. And I don't think now, you at least said 2.13, you weren't talking about this year, Claire, but now we know that the playing group is of that mindset. We know we have, what do I call it, the, the players now, I think the playing group, some of them youngsters have just come in who will get better very, very quickly, as we've seen with young Casbol for one, he's taken a massive step forward just by being played consistently. So I think the ingredients, talk about three, but it's based on a, a lack of success over such a long time now, and this is uncarton like that everybody's getting very, very hungry to do something. And I think you can do that without having the support off the field. I think Carlton's got that into place extremely well. But we now have a playing group. I remember running into the chaplain at the Carlton Football Club not so long ago, and he said, David, since your time... This is the best group of young men we have who can actually play football. He wasn't talking about these are the greatest footballers we've got, but he was talking about the quality and character of our young players. And we know they can play. So the combination, combination Claire, of character and competency, I think, is already underpinned. You know, you don't know what's going to happen in the last few weeks of September, but I almost can guarantee that 2013 will deliver with reasonable run with injury an opportunity to play in the finals and to win a premiership. Fantastic, thank you. Darren, you're up next. Hey David. G'day Darren. Hey, um, 20 odd years ago I had the pleasure of meeting you a couple of times. Now living in Queensland, back then I lived in Tassie and was part of the Tasmanian supporters group for Carlton and uh, that grew from about 20 people to over 300 and I think it pushed through to about 500. And, you came down a couple of times at functions, and I shared a meal with you amongst that sort of uh, function. And um, you were you were always very good to talk to. You never looked over anyone's shoulder to look to the next conversation. And I know in the promo of this event, there was a, I didn't see it entirely, but there was a letter that you hand addressed to a guy who made a uh, inquiry to the club back in '95 or something, and that didn't surprise me at all. So I find you to be fantastically honest and open when you're around us mega supporters. So thank you. Um, the question, question was um, about that hunger, which was my question too, but I'll ask it first. During the middle of this year, I know we had lots of uh, injury interruptions and, uh, uh, and so forth, but we did look to lose the hunger for about four to six weeks, which can happen for any team. Why do you think that happened to us? Darren, look, hunger and what's the word, uh, energy to and all that, can break down very quickly, uh, Darren, under the frustration of not being able to deliver. We got smashed by a couple of sides early, and I must admit I was really anxious that we didn't show the kind of character, the kind of persistence or perseverance that 
you'd think even when you're not playing well that the team would produce and that's where supporters get very irritated and extremely frustrated when they believe that the team isn't really playing. But I, I honestly, you can track it back because I think the talent that we needed to give us confidence was not available at that stage and the lack of confidence, you become a very anxious group and you become very, um, not so much frightened, but you become very nervous about not being able to do what people expect of you. And I think we collectively lost our way. And, and to get it back, even without the total playing group coming back again, Darren, gave me terrific confidence that in the last few weeks, we're still well below capacity in terms of um, players that we want to be able to access. So are a lot of other clubs. And it's the way that you react. And your disappointment would have been like mine because we didn't look like we were reacting like a club who was digging in despite the elements that were around us. So we got out of it. And we got out of it on the back of some consistent coaching, some younger blokes who came in, returned to form of some older guys, and uh, injuries starting to decrease at a rate that allowed us to get a reasonable team on the field. So, Darren, I, I must admit, going from someone who thought they were going to play off in the uh, grand final in 2012, in about five weeks we went back to saying, oh, I don't know whether we can make the finals, and we're still in jeopardy now because of that period in the middle. But I think, you know, I'm confident that it's been turned around because it's nothing more than a mindset. And I think our mindset right now is as good as I've seen for this team probably in five years. So I'm confident about this immediate and then the long-term future. Very good. Cathy, you got a question for David? I do. Uh, David, I understand that you're inspiring another club at the moment, and that's OK. Um, but for as long as you're in the corridors of the Carlton rooms and you run into the occasional player, what are you saying to them? What, what, I mean, it's David Park and three, um, three-time premiership leader. Uh, you've got to be saying something to them. Something that that. I don't get. I don't get that close that often. I've probably <laughs> talked, uh, Kathy, to the uh, the coaching staff and the administrative support staff more than I do. I'm, I'm privileged. I'm an onlooker just like you. I get all excited when I go down the rooms and see these people and want to touch them and shake them by the hand. I don't think I influence it, with the exception of a few like Jared Waite, who I've spent some time with over, like Juddy. There's some that you get to know because of the circles in which we, we mix. Uh, I'm not for inter interfering. I'm not an inspirational character at all for the this particular team. I'm just another like you, a, a very excited supporter when they're doing well and a very nasty old man when uh, when, when they don't. It's just a simple fact of life. And our happiness, like yours, we're no different to, uh, to Claire and Darren, that your life depends on you. Well, the first thing I said this week is I've got the three clubs that I was uh, privileged to coach, Fitzroy, Carlton and Hawthorne, all had a win in one weekend. Well, I'm like a pig in you-know-what when, when that happens because uh, it, it hasn't happened for the whole of 2012. So they get Carlton, and I guess Hawthorne at the moment, Brisbane in a lesser way because they're not going to be in the finals, but to have, have them up and about, it's exciting because you go to the game, and I go to every game I can. I went to four at the weekend. To go to the game... Knowing your real chance, I sat in the grandstand and watched them play. It wasn't working for radio or television. I sat there with a grin from ear to ear amongst probably 10 of the most die-hard Carlton supporters, including the great John Nichols, to see the joy. They couldn't get the smiles off their faces because it's a natural expression of people who love a club and see their team playing the kind of football that they dream about that we don't see as often as we would like. And we had it in absolute full measure on the weekend. It was a great... In fact, it's the best performance I've seen from a Carlton team probably for five or six years. Excellent. So what did you guys make of the performance, Claire? Did you watch the game? Claire, did you watch the game? Sorry, I just missed you there. Did you watch the game on the weekend? Did you think... I didn't watch it. I was there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, you're watching it. You're there. You're watching it. You're there. You observed it. What did you think and feel? It's just to get a bit of pride back to yep. win by yep. such a big margin at the G. It's just 
there's nothing like it and it gave us a little bit of faith back that come September if we're able to get through given you know everything that's going on that we could really do some damage. Yep. Do you feel the same way Darren? Yeah I think so I mean, I mean it was a, I haven't watched the whole game I'm looking to uh, watch the replay but um, I liked our second game last year I flew down to Melbourne to watch that and saw uh, Walker's hanger and Eddie's I think should have been goal of the year so that was a, that was a highlight for me over the last few years as well. David while we've got you in this um, ex exclusive box it's only us so you can tell us um, that out of those three clubs you mentioned before who's deepest in your heart? Oh, clear that. <laughs> you know, I, I tell you I'll try and make it a brief story I got on the tram <laughs> When you're an old man like me, you get a seniors card, so it only costs you three bucks twenty to go anywhere. It's good. <laughs> and uh, Hawthorne were playing Carlton in the quarter final, it might have been, or semi final of the Map Cup a couple of years ago. I trod down the hill with my book, got on the 48 tram, sat in the corner, and I suddenly was aware that the tram was half full of Carlton and half full of Hawthorne supporters. <laughs> so this very interesting conversation started over my head who I actually belonged to, who was I going to barrack for tonight? Went down the hill in Church Street, all the way along Bridge Street, and this really good argument. Now, putting up, you know, I was, really, I was fascinated by the argument, putting up why I should be bagging for Card or should be bagging for Hawthorne. And then we were just about up to Punt Road, and uh, the bloke up the back of the tram goes, Hey, you, we're talking about you. And I said, Oh, me, yeah, he says, You. <laughs> The tram want to know who you're going to barrack for tonight. And I looked around the tram and every eye was on me. I thought, I'm in diabolical trouble. Pushed the button, got off the tram and got on the one behind. I wasn't brave enough to answer. Well, that's a terrible way to answer. Look, you can't love one child, Kathy, more than you love another one. So I have a privileged life to be a part of the history of both those clubs, to be invited back in and looked after like I'm a family member. It's a difficult thing to say. And uh, if they play off the grand final... I will be in, I don't know that I'll be able to go, it'll be the first grandfather I've missed in 62 years, but I'll, I mightn't be able to go because I'll be split down the middle. Well, you can sit with us. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, if you get a ticket, I'll be there, don't worry. <laughs> Claire, have you got another question for David? Um, not so much. I know you've been doing a little bit of uh, speaking to different groups, like um, motivational speaking and things like that. Yep, I do. I do yeah. a lot of that. Claire, I'm just getting a bit old, but I say it again. I was just wondering how you got into it. Well, I guess that this is the interesting thing about about coaches now and what is their role. Um, whether they just teach and coach and um, and instruct on a daily basis, or whether a senior coach now has got to be a bit more than that. He's got to be a manager leader and manage the group of coaches because the coaching is mostly done by assistants these days. The senior coach controls match day, he controls what go on, but the actual work on a daily basis probably is done by more of the seven or eight or nine assistants that Carlton have got, so Rats has got to become a good, what's the word, manager. And that part's difficult because you've got to manage the coaching group, you've got to manage the playing group, you've got to manage the supporters, you've got to manage the board, you've got to manage the sponsors, you've got to manage the media. It's a very, very big job to do with lots of competencies. And uh, I'm finding that uh, when I go and, and talk to groups these days, they don't quite understand. They think the coach does all the coaching and that's what he's required to do. But the senior coach now, to me, I'm involved in the process to get the Port Adelaide coach. And I'm saying we've got to decide who you want to be the coach. You've got to decide whether the person is going to be the person who represents the club in all these areas or do you want somebody who actually teaches the actually teaches and coaches the team. The two separate jobs and clubs have got to think about getting a structure and people into that structure that actually mirrors that, which ain't so easy because they want the one person to do everything. Jobs beyond everybody. So I'm lucky to um, to have the opportunity to go into. I do a bit of work with Aldi stores, and I do a bit of work with Reese Plumbing. And I do a bit of Mars. That's, that's a good job, Mars, particularly their product, and it happens to be the sponsor of Carlton Footy Club. <laughs> I do a lot of work with with the management team at Mars. So it's very interesting as we look at what footy clubs have done, and football's been on the back of business. You can understand that. We're now on, what is it, a billion dollar business, and and we've had to think in a very professional business-like way. 
But now we're having things happening in footy, particularly Australian footy, which is appropriate for business. And we can teach business about 360 degree feedback and how does it work and how do we help people to get better. That's done naturally and extremely well within a footy club, but it's not done so well in business. So there's a bit of going back from footy to business as we've been able to take from business over the last 15 or 20 years as we've become fully professional. So there's a bit of give and take and people want to understand that. So I get the opportunity to go in and talk to management teams in business about how we can help each other to get better and how we can get people to play with and for each other, this team element. And I'm, I love that sort of thing because people all the time are trying to get better in whatever they do and we've got systems in place now to help that process. David, I was going to ask a question, but you sort of answered it there about coaching versus now and back when you coached. I used to love seeing your jugular pop out at the half time, at the quarter time addresses and so on. But a bit about Ratton, a couple of questions. Firstly, um, he used to coach a lot from the sidelines. He seems to have been pinned back into the coach's box. I wasn't sure whether that's under scrutiny that he's chosen to do that or he feels more or less comfortable back there. And secondly, in 1995, in our fantastic premiership year, um, our then best and fairest was Brett Ratton. I wonder if you can tell me how many Brownlow votes he polled in that year. About four, I think, wasn't it? Uh, he got zero, and oh, I, I just zero. wondered how there could be a best and fairest at a premiership club not get a single Brownlow vote. Um, so the two question, questions, Aaron, I guess. You, you better answer that yourself. You know why, because... What we ask for, demand of, expect in the roles that they play. You've got to remember that he was a young player out of the back pocket, hadn't played all that many games. He convinced me that he should go into the leadership group and he wasn't, didn't have the qualifications to do it. He wasn't experienced. He wasn't all that confident. He was extremely committed. But two of the criteria that we're using to be in our leadership group he didn't really have. And yet he convinced me very earnestly in my office, nose to nose, that he needed to be in there and should be in there. And if you talk to the group of players that ran the club in 95, literally, he contributed probably better than anybody else. And he went from a back pocket player into the midfield and won the best and fairest, Darren, in the same year. That is an enormous mm. capacity to play and understand the game. He, of all the players, I keep saying I've coached, understood the game and the people playing it better, equally as well, if not better, than any other single person I had the good fortune of coaching. And I had a lot of very good players who have become exceedingly good coaches. So uh, what we ask of them and how we measure them and judge them and therefore vote on them is entirely different systems to the one that's used for whatever you like to do, for any of the television, radio or, in fact, the Brownlow medal. So you get acknowledged. You always look at the club's best and first and understand how much those players are appreciated for what they bring that a lot of people don't understand. Hmm. And, the, and the Ratten from the sidelines are in the coach's box? Yeah, well, I, must admit, I must admit I had a bit of a niggle in his ear too. The fact is the bloke who's, um, who's the captain of the ship, who runs the ship, gets up on the bridge and runs it. He doesn't go down in the engine room and pour the oil into the engines, if you think about it. Now, I use that analogy to him. I'm not saying that I convinced him to go back up, but you're going to control the show. You've got to be in a position to see what's going on. I love the idea, and I see Richo's down there now. Richo's got a wonderful experience. He's on the bench and delivering the immediate feedback, the support of players, uh, the encouragement they needed, some of the a direction that they should have, and he's doing that job extremely well. I just have a personal belief that the person who's leading the show has to be in the best position to see and understand it. That's on the bridge of the ship. Yep, fair enough. David, I know you spoke about Levi Casbolt during the blueprint, which just uh, went off air. I was, I was interested to hear. Uh, I was interested to hear what the guys here, uh, who they think yeah. has really stepped up out of the young brigade uh, in the second half of the year. Kathy, we might ask you, who's really impressed you? Uh, definitely Jared Waite. In fact, uh, my first time on the Blueprint, I made a comment that I wish I hadn't now because um, he's just proven me wrong. He's been brilliant, absolutely brilliant, and I think um, if he keeps keeps it up, we're going to have a brilliant, brilliant uh, 
year next year. Well, that's a great yeah, question. Yeah, well, it's, it's, see, and that's the thing, Kat. We, that's why we've got to build a structure around him. His durability, I think, as we all know, has been susceptible in about four different parts of his body. And uh, to get him there and keep him there is questionable. That's not nothing against Jared, but he just has one of those bodies. When he's in, he does as he did at the weekend, things that nobody else in the Carlton Football Club can do. And that's why he's a bit of a barometer as to where they are. I think Simpson's the other barometer. Uh, and Simpson's got no body to go with. He's got this little skinny body. He runs around as brave as Ned Kelly and uh, does incredible things. I think they're the two barometers. So if we can get him fit, I have no problem about that. If he can stand up and do what he does or is doing right now for a total season, it will be the greatest asset that Carlton have in trying to deliver some final wow. success in 2003. No doubt about it, Kath. I, I'm absolutely with you. He's a very special... And a lovely young man. He's he hasn't been the greatest trainer. I think that might have been one of his one of his difficulties over time, that he hasn't prepared himself. And I think he's mature enough to know the end of the road is not all that far away. And if he doesn't do it now, it's never going to happen for him in his lifetime. Claire, who's in Chris Jones? Uh, no secret, I'm a Tui fan. <laughs> and you but think he's had a good year? He's been a bit quiet lately. Um, but with Levi coming in, one of the young kids, fresh name, people that we don't really know too much about, um, he's actually been really impressive. He can take a strong mark. He's a good kick, as we saw on, on Saturday. Um, and, yeah, it's just exciting to see what he can do going forward. What are your thoughts on Zach Tui? Look, yeah, I mean, Zach, he was under a bit of pressure early and he had a couple of uh, significant weaknesses in his game. Nobody has worked harder to bridge the Gaelic to Australian football and to become, he's a, he's a technician, he can kick the ball, loves the game, wants to do well. You're quite right, his form over the last month has not been quite as good. But there is no doubt he will fill a very, such a good athlete, he'll fill a very important role in the future as long as the confidence keeps building. If he stays where he is now, he'll be an in and out player. But if he goes to the next level, he'll be an outstanding player for Carlton in a role that I think he's capable of doing. And Darren, just to wrap up with the, uh, with the last question, I wanted to pose to you, who do you think is leading the best and fairest at this stage? Um... Well, a few of them have had some absences. I was going to say I've been really impressed with Murphy and Simpson being out for the period of time and coming back without hardly missing a beat. Um, but if I could comment on a new player, you know, Tom Bell, I, used to, I saw him play locally here in Queensland and saw his uh, footage tape that was floating around on YouTube and I thought, this kid's going to be an outstanding player. He's got the sort of toughness and that hunger that I think we were lacking midway through the year. And, of course, Casbolt's been fantastic. But if I had to take a bet... Even with the time out, I'd say Murphy. You want to ask mine? David, yeah. Scotland will win it by a country mile. <laughs> <laughs> no, he won't. So don't, don't go and bet on him because I, <laughs> I never pick him. But he's just been so good at a – no, so consistent at a unbelievably good uh, level. So I hope that he might be rewarded for a great season in real difficult circumstances. Absolutely. Here, here. Guys, we might wrap it up there. David, thanks very much for joining us in today's Hangout. Kathy, Darren and Claire, thanks for taking part. And anybody watching, if you'd like to be part of next week's Hangout, all you need to do is jump on the website, register your details and we'll give you a call. So until next time, go Blues and thanks again, David. That's right. See you, Claire, Darren, Kathy. Lovely to thanks, talk to David. you. Thanks, David. Bye for now. Bye.